What does it take to pull off a truly amazing BP challenge? Dedication. Patience. Bravery. A blue piece of attitude that tells you anything is possible. Well, we're about to find out anyway, because this is our top 10 countdown of BP's most epic challenges. special Blue Peter where we look back at some of our favourite challenges over the last few years. Yes, we asked you, the BP fans, to choose from a list of 10 challenges and vote for your favourites. And today we'll be counting down numbers 10 to 6 in part one. Yes, there has been so many epic feats of courage, determination, endurance over the years that it was hard to just pick 10, wasn't it? Mm. It certainly was, but should we dive into it? Yeah. Oh, yes. Starting in at number 10, we've got our very own Lindsay Russell. Back in 2014, she took on a mountain marathon, which was so physically and mentally demanding, it was the equivalent of four back-to-back -back marathons. Let's have a look. I've been training to take on one of the most testing endurance races on the planet, the Patrol de Glacier. Along the way, I've had highs, and I've certainly had lows. This has just broken me. But after six months of gruelling preparation, the day I've been building to has arrived. It's the day of my mountain marathon. In the shadow of the Matterhorn Mountain is the Swiss town of Zermatt, the start point of the race. Inside our team hotel, I'm making my final preparations alongside teammates, former Olympic skier Graham Bell and top mountain guide Graham Frost. We'll be attempting to cover 110 kilometers of uphill climbing and downhill skiing in the colossal Alps range. We depart from the town of Zermatt at 9 p.m., climbing through the night, hopefully arriving around 17 hours later in Verbier. Nine o'clock. my mountain marathon. We have three hours to make it to the first checkpoint at Schoenbill, or else we're out of the race. <laughs> and with 15 minutes to spare, we've made it. <laughs> but it's getting seriously cold and seriously dark. At the point where my body is telling me to go to sleep, we're about to face the steepest and coldest climb of the race. I've got a feeling the next few hours won't be pleasant. Still going strong. I need my mind to forget how hard my body is finding this, but somehow in the dark and minus 10 temperature, that mental battle seems all the harder. This was never ending. As we approach the Tête Blanche checkpoint, it's 2.15 in the morning and minus 15 degrees C. We've been going uphill now for over five hours. The prospect of skiing downhill in the dark with tired legs is scary. Okay, remember, if anyone falls, you just shout, OK? Keep going, keep going, keep going. I've only skied in the dark once before, and at this early hour of the morning, it feels ten times harder. As we near Arolla, the halfway point of the race, my legs are tired and my self-belief is shaken. I've never been this tired in my life. I don't know if I'm tired physically just because it's four in the morning or something. Do you even know what the time is? The halfway point is the chance to get some hot food. And for breakfast today, it's beans, which is strangely comforting. We are going to make it, <coughs> aren't we? <laughs> I really we are going to so. make it. Yeah. Come on. So after just a 20 minute break, it's time to set back off on another uphill climb. At 5.20 in the morning, the sun rises. 
and that really helped to lift my spirits. Climbing in the dark meant we couldn't see how truly beautiful our surroundings are. By 7.30 a.m., we've nearly climbed the Reed Matten Peak, and this is what we can see. Hand on the rope, it's a bit slippy on the rock there. Over the ridge, as we make our way down, I oh. fall. It's all right, I've got you. How was that, Lindsay? Absolutely terrible. At 9 o'clock in the morning, after a brief section on the flat, we're approaching another massive climb. After 12 hours of racing, so much of me wants to give up, but I have to cross the finish line. To get through this is going to take every ounce of mental strength I have. At 11.30 a.m., the end of the last big climb is in sight. As I near the peak with the support of everyone around me, I know I've completed the toughest part of the course. The climbing is over, but we still have to make our way downhill to Verbier. It's a long ski on very tired legs. Right then, time to get skiing and finish this race. A whopping 17 hours and 110 kilometers of racing from when we started, we've made it to the end. What I've just done has been the hardest thing I've ever done, but also the most satisfying. And I'm really proud of myself for doing it. Even though I thought it was impossible, just goes to show if you think something's impossible, you should just go out there and have a go because actually you might surprise yourself and you might end up making yourself really proud. So, yeah. Amazing. That's at number 10. Imagine what's still to come. I know. So good. So proud of you, Lindsay. We love you. What a start. Literally. Now, we're on to number nine, and guess what? It's me! Now, before I started here at Blue Peace, I had never used sign language before, which is why it was a real challenge when I was asked to join a very special lockdown performance. This is Sign Along With Us, a group of 70 performers aged from five to 58 who sign a special form of sign language called Sign Supported English whilst performing as a choir. The group was started by Jade and her brother Christian and they blew the judges of Britain's Got Talent away with their performance of This Is Me. Hey Christian! Hey Jade, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so you guys use sign language to communicate, tell me about that. But when Christian was born, he was stillborn and he didn't take his first breath for 24 minutes, um, which led to him having a type of brain injury called HIE. And we was told because of his brain injury, he would never understand what we were saying and he would never be able to then understand it enough to communicate back. But he would just light up whenever we spoke to him. So I'd heard about sign language and I'd heard that it helped a lot of people when they couldn't talk, when they couldn't communicate. So I started doing signing with him every day and he just loved it. He just literally, his face lit up whenever we would sign. So how did the choir come about? You know, not only do I want him to be able to talk to me, to my mum, to my dad, I want him to be able to talk to everybody. So me and Christy was actually wondering if you would like to join us in our next like little sign-in song that we've been practicing, you would join the rest of the group and sign it with us. And you've got three days to learn the song. Three days? Yeah. You have a lot of faith in me, I can try. <laughs> this is definitely my toughest Blue Peter challenge yet, but I'm determined to do this. That's not it. Rewind, 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 rewind. I can either sing or sign, but when I try and do them together, my mind literally goes crazy. So I have a few days to perfect this. I knew the pathway like the back of my hand. Yes! Progress. And before I know it, three days has flown by and it's time to take on the challenge of singing and signing with the group. Oh no, 
concentration and forgotten how to sign the next bit. Luckily though, I've got the rest of the group to follow and I've managed to get back into my flow. to Christian and Jade and all of your friends for teaching me how to sing and sign. It was such a memorable experience. Yeah, really important skill to learn because you used those skills a little bit later on during a live show, didn't you? You remember? Yeah, of I course. Did. Now, in at number eight is a challenge that was a once in a lifetime experience for Radzi, the ultimate adrenaline rush, skydiving in formation with the Royal Air Force. It's Radzi's free fall. I've earned the right to make a dream of a lifetime come true. With the help of some of the RAF's finest instructors, I've passed an intensive skydive course. We landed it on our feet! Meaning I get to perform a free fall jump with their iconic parachute display team, the RAF Falcons. For my challenge, I'll be part of two of the team's signature moves a free fall formation, then the famous parachute stack. If all this wasn't enough, I'll then attempt to hit a special target on the ground. In the first of our two jumps, we'll try a free fall formation, creating a pattern in the air before opening our parachutes. I'll be in the middle and we'll have to maintain total control for the falcons to form around me. Jump two is something no Blue Peter presenter has ever done before, the iconic Falcon Stack. I'll be at the bottom as each member of the team forms a giant column under parachute. I'll have to turn at the right time. One wrong move and you can risk tangling parachutes and that can lead to serious problems. Just one mistake from me ruins this entire challenge. There's a lot of responsibility on my shoulders and I just want to do it well. First up, the free fall formation. Okay, mate. Check in! Okay! Check out! Okay. Wings in! Out! In! Out! I leave the plane with two of the Falcons. We get into position. Then the other Falcons start to arrive. It's so hard to maintain control. One slip from me, though, and the whole thing will fall apart. Time is running out before we have to pull our parachutes. I just don't want to let the rest of the team down. And then... At exactly the same time, they're gone. They make that look so easy. That's only half the challenge. So here we go, my last ever jump, and it's with the Falcons. Come on! Yeah, that's all copy. The drop zone's clear. Start the challenge when you're ready. Wait it! Oh, no, Radzi! I've lost control again. I need to steady myself. The Falcons can't jump until I level out. The team now have to catch me and get into formation. Woo! We are open. I need to get into a turning pattern so the rest of the stack can follow. Above me, they start to form. Woo! The combination of concentration and adrenaline is absolutely unbelievable. As I check my canopy, I see them. 
Oh my goodness, they're directly above me! I'm the first civilian to ever join an Aria Falcon stack. To be gliding through the air as a team is a once in a lifetime experience. Now to hit that target. I want to get this right so badly. This is almost the toughest part of my challenge. If I'm going to be anywhere near, I need to be so precise. This is going to be close. So close! Yeah! To get to do what I've just done with the absolute best in the world, what what can beat that? This is best day ever, best day of my life. Wow! I don't know about you guys, I would much rather Radzi do that than me because that looked terrifying. Yeah, go Radzi. So Radzi. good, I loved it. Okay, moving on to what you, the BP fans, voted in at number seven. It is BP presenter number 40, which is, of course, Adam Beals, who took on the most ultimate challenge. Yes, Adam's challenge was to be the first person ever to cycle the length of the longest lake in England. Have a look. It's the day of the challenge, and I'm feeling calm and determined to get on that hydrofoil bike and cycle the 18-kilometer length of Lake Windermere. To add to the pressure, I'll also have the chance to break a world record today. The fastest one kilometer on a hydrofoil e-bike. So that means my first kilometer will be a sprint. The rules state I need to complete the kilometer in seven minutes and I have to start my record attempt in the water. Three, two, one, go. Go, 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 go. I'm going to have to go as hard as I possibly can if I want to stand any chance of breaking this record. It's the first time I've seen him do this in person, and he is rapid. I really need to push it. Gliding like a graceful goose. Across swan. The graceful swan. So, uh, mm. I'll be in charge of that. Right, Adam, home stretch. About 150 metres left. Woo. Nearly there. Keep it going. Keep it going. And you are... Uh, cross the line. Good Woo! man. I hope I broke it. Now you've just got another 17 kilometers left. <laughs> Yay! Whoa! I've given it all I've got, but I won't find out if I've broken the world record until I get to the end. I've still got the length of this massive lake to cycle, and I just hope I haven't used up too much energy. How are you feeling, mate? Good. Sort of. Good sort of. Oh, 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 oh. Not that good. I just lost my balance. This couldn't have happened at a worse time. I'm exhausted and now I'm going to have to do a submerged launch to get going again. Something I always find hard in training. Good lad. Go on, Adam. Go on, Adam. Ah. Go on, Adam. I'm lucky. Go on, Bills. Go on, Bills. Go on, Bills. Yes. Ah. You got it this time. Come on, Adam. Good lad. Let's go, mate. Go on, go on. Ah. That looks so difficult. Ah. I've burnt myself out. I don't have the energy to get myself out of the water, and the more I fail, the more tired I become. Ah, gutted, mate. Have a rest, mate. The success of this challenge is hanging by a thread. Go on, Adam. Go on, Adam. Here you go. Here you go. Go on, Adam. Yes! Good lad. Good man. That's what we love to see. It took everything in me to get up out of the water and cycling again. The current is so strong. I'm really trying my hardest to counteract these waves. There's a real risk of me falling back in again. And if that happens, I just don't think I've got the energy to get myself out again. Great save. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Adam. Yeah. You're halfway now. Okay. 
Wow, isn't this just beautiful? Okay, Adam, Yeah. a little update for you. You see okay. those yachts, the furthest ones in the distance? The yachts, yeah. Yeah, that's your finish line. Home stretch. Yes! Yeah? Yes! Oh, yes! Go on, mate, go for it. Good lad. Adam, final push. Adam, Adam, yes, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Woo. You did it. I did it. I actually made it. I am so, so happy to see in the finish line and being able to say that I've done it is the wow. best win in the world. OK, there's a small matter of a world record. Jack, join us, please. The time to beat was seven minutes. Adam, I can now confirm you covered one kilometre in six minutes. Yeah! 13 yeah! seconds. Yeah! Oh my goodness, yes! Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to officially yes! recognise a new Guinness World yeah! Records title. Yes! Woohoo! Yeah! Wow! What a guy! Well done, Adam. That's amazing. Well, now on to number six, and I gotta tell you, this one is impressive. Yes, Radzi returns to the skies once again, but this time with Lindsay. Yeah, they were both strapped to the wings of an actual aeroplane flying at 120 miles an hour and upside down, which makes me feel a bit dizzy thinking about it. That's right, we're going to try wing walking, <laughs> which involves standing on the wings of a plane whilst it's in mid air. And helping us do that, is the world's only formation wing walking display team. We're going to attempt a classic maneuver the loop, the loop. We will each be strapped to a plane. Really tighten those. And whilst flying in formation, we'll perform a perfect loop in the sky. As we hit takeoff speed, the noise is just unbelievable. And a 150 mile an hour wind does pretty strange things to our faces. It's time for our pilots to begin the loop. They start by diving the planes to help us gain speed. Then we begin to climb. Like a genuinely to come to terms with. Like, wow, I'm, I'm lost for, I'm not usually lost for words, I'm properly lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, genuinely, in my all Blue Peter filming, I've never been that terrified, excited, happy, scared. All the emotions. Everything at once. Yeah. Well, do you know what? That's why it was a BP challenge. We've done it. Challenge complete. Challenge please. over. Yes. Uh, you didn't think that was the challenge, did you? What? What you're actually here for today is to take on Blue Peter's iconic wing walking challenge. You must pass a one metre baton to each other while strapped to the wings of two planes. Oh, and Lindsay, you're the one going upside down. This is a ridiculous challenge. I've watched this challenge when we used to watch Blue Peter growing up and they've always failed. So now the pressure's on. Third time lucky. Mm -hmm. And you know what's going to help? What? Happy dance as I walk off. No, don't you? Yeah. No. Can we succeed? Well, if we can, it will be with the help of our pilots, Martin and Dave. So, guys, how exactly are we going to do this? How does it work? Well, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to fly two vintage biplanes in formation. We're going to fly one above the other in mm. perfect alignment. And then as we're there, you're going to be standing on the wing and passing that baton across to Radzi. OK. 
We only have around three attempts to get this right because there's a limit to the number of times that I can hold the baton up in 120 mile per hour winds. Blue Peter history. Let's do it. Let's do it. Once in the air, Martin and Dave begin to manoeuvre us into position for our first attempt. They need to be so exact in their flying. We swoop into position, trying to match the speed of Lindsay's plane. We're just not close enough. We're definitely closer. Are we gonna do it? Come on! No! I just don't know if we're ever gonna get this right. I'm starting to struggle. My arms are in agony. This is our last chance. I wait until the last second and then hold the baton as high as I possibly can. Every inch of me is willing us to get closer. Just come on! And then... Incredible, a genuine Blue Peter first as well. Wonderful stuff. Yeah. Wow, well, I cannot wait to see the final part of our countdown. Same, and it's only going to get bigger. We have an incredible kayaking expedition along the Amazon. Crossing the Irish Channel in a giant inflatable bull. A journey to the South Pole. My climb to the top of the Old Man of Hoy. And an epic high wire walk. So, which challenge will take the top spot? You do not want to miss it. Take care. See bye you. Bye. bye. bye.